my name is Kevin Nix, and welcome back to Front Stretch 5. This week, we're going to look at five forgotten crashes from the Sonoma Raceway. Numbers 1 and 2, 1999 Save Mart Craig and 350. This race featured two nearly identical accidents, both of which are on this list. The first of these occurred in the early stages of the event. Steve Park either had a parts failure or wheel hopped the entry to the first corner and backed the car uphill into the tire barriers. Once the car hit the tires, it catapulted in the air and did a full revolution before coming back down on its wheels on top of the tire barrier. Park walked away uninjured after this acrobatic looking crash. Pretty first position, so he is definitely on the move. And we have a car into the tire barriers. That's Steve Park. This is at the exit of turn number two. I think that's where Richard Petty hit the wall here exactly. a few years ago. It sure is. Yeah, it's a full course caution. First time this afternoon. Comes on lap number 25. Ooh, Park is way up on the tires and the, uh, the barriers. John Kernan has a report. Overturns completely in the air, comes down on all four. Looks like those guys at the X Games, the way they do those uh, <laughs> skates. Wow. Man, oh, man. Well, we talk about the X Games. That's when racing turns into an extreme sport. We just hope that Steve is okay. They're talking with him, and he's moving around inside. He's taking the helmet off, so that is good news. But what a scary ride for Steve Park. With less than 20 laps to go, Ken Schrader crashes in the same corner. He hits the tire barrier in the same way as Park, but the car flips several times and lands on its roof. Like Park, Schrader also walked away from the wrecked machine, although the incident itself was not quite as acrobatic. These two accidents, while both similar, are unique on a grander scale. This type of turn one flip has not been seen in any Sonoma race before or since, with the closest comparable wreck being Richard Petty's hard impact in 1991. Strategy that they worked out to get him up in the top. Oh, another car up on the wall here. It's Ken Schrader. Just like the one car. Oh, he, and he stays on the roof. Yeah. Steve Park landed on all fours, but Schrader is upside down in exactly the same area of the racetrack that Steve Park had his crash early on. Let's take a look at it. Again, it's just about the same type of crash. He goes over once one and a half times and then rolls back on the hood looked like he was going to roll on the wheels and all of a sudden uh oh he's going to go down and talk to somebody no nope. uh oh guess he just ran across the racetrack number three 2000 save mark craig in 350 qualifying one year after the dual flips in turn one ward burton flips in qualifying however this flip was not nearly as severe as the previous two going through the s's Ward lost control of the car across the rumble strips and spun the car into the tire barriers. After hitting the barriers, the number 22 car gently rolled over one time, landing back on its wheels. As the late Benny Parsons put it, he does a slow rollover. Then he got out, looked at the car, and said, I made a mistake. And turned the car over, had to go to backup. Had a good, really good race car. Here's that qualifying lap Friday afternoon. Gets that left rear in the dirt. The caterpillar car goes around, backs him fence, and watch this, climbs that fence and does a slow roll over, lands on its wheels, and Ward got out through his helmet and said, hmm, I made a mistake. Well, he started in 37th position. He got the first provision. Number four, 2008 Bennett Lane Winery 200. The NASCAR Camping World West Series, known today as the ARCA West Series, held a crash-filled race in its 2008 running. This race featured 12 cautions for 40 laps, meaning that nearly 60% of the 68 lap race was run under caution. The most severe caution was the final one, when with two laps to go, multiple cars collided going downhill into turn four. Jeff Jefferson successfully avoided the turn four tangle, but hit the rumble strips going into turn five. This vaulted the car upside down and Jefferson flipped several times. He walked away uninjured, but having a car flip several times on pavement on a road course is a rare sight. Brian is not clear, giving clear. any ground at all. You gotta remember, oh, trouble back in the back. Ryan Foster turns it around, still no caution. Cars keep going underway, oh my! That's Jeff Jefferson on his roof! 
Bell rolls. Hard, hard roll. Wow. Look at the wind and net comes down. He looks like he's okay. He has pulled the wind and net of that race car down, and man, did he go for a ride. What a ride by Jeff Jefferson. Jeff trying to climb out of that race car with all the safety equipment. It's hard to get turned out that window, but it looks like Jeff is okay. Wow, listen to the crowd, the crowd would you? crowd applauses. Man, what a ride that was. He just launched over them turtles. Jeff Jefferson, great short track racer from Washington State. It's the mogul here, pretty much out of control. Nothing he can do, hard down on the right front. Man, hard impact. The roof flaps come up, but at that point, it was too late. His teammate right behind him in that 10 car, Jim Warren. Another tribute to the roll cages of these race cars. NASCAR has got these bars and the placement of these bars just right. Look at that barrel roll. Wow. Number 5, 2010 Toyota Save Mart 350. This race featured two notable incidents. One, a restart stack up just after the halfway point that tore up seven cars and prompted a red flag. And two, Marcos Ambrose not maintaining pace car speed up turns two and three under the final caution, which lost him the race to Jimmy Johnson. On the race's final lap, Matt Kenseth appeared to lose his brakes in the S's and crashed hard into the tire barriers, rear window deep. He caught Bobby Labonte on the way by, and Labonte was fortunate to not wreck himself. In the replay, Kenseth comes from multiple car lengths behind Labonte, and with the S's being one of the fastest sections of the racetrack, this brake failure and subsequent contact with Labonte was unavoidable. Watch the 17 on the inside, right to the right. I, it's really strange. I mean, it's almost like his throttle hung. I, it's just, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, he's, this is not a... Something was definitely wrong there. I'm not sure what it was, but... I just, you know, he came flying on the inside like he couldn't stop. He, he backed it in there pretty good. Man. Tore the tire barrier right out. Thank you all for watching this edition of Front Stretch 5. If you have any crashes that you think I should have covered or any suggestions for future content, feel free to comment below. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.